Hello fellow web map makers, welcome to the night's live map making session. Can you hear the bells in the background? They are tolling for us for our mapping session as usual. Very nice start and uh, let's see what we can do map wise today. Sound is good hopefully, yeah, uh, it's uh, good to hear. And uh, if the bells are g getting too loud and overpowering me, I have to close the window. But I hope not, because it's fairly warm and uh, it's nice to have a little bit of fresh air coming in. I hope you're all doing good, enjoying the summer. Unless you're in the southern hemisphere, then you enjoy the winter. And um, welcome to a certain um, new idea I have for the live mapping sessions. Uh, that I haven't done before. I want to do a multi-part project, a larger map over several sessions, not necessarily one each, each week, but uh, certainly quite regularly. And I want to map a fairly large city. Cities are always big projects, or usually are, because they are extensive with lots of detail in, lots of people, lots of buildings, and they can qu be quite a beast to map. And I want to show you a bit of my process. It's been a while since I've done a city, so I hope I remember my process, but uh, I'm sure we can manage something. And I'll uh, go through the whole mapping project. I'm not sure I can do the whole map on the stream, because that might get a bit too much, uh, crowding out any any other types of maps. So perhaps I'll just uh, do some mapping between the sessions and then go back in with new stuff uh, for another one. Let me know your preferences, um, what you would like to see. I'm open to suggestions during the session. I only have a vague idea of the kind of map I want to make. And so I'm always happy to get suggestions and uh, then uh, introduce new stuff and see what you can uh, come up with. So let's see, uh, I'm going to start from zero. I don't even have a starting map prepared or anything, so I just have a few ideas and we'll see where we go with that. All right, map, map time. What do we need to decide? Well, just apart from the general kind of city we want to make, and so we need to de decide on a mapping style. And But for that, we probably need to first need to know what kind of city we want to create, how large it should be. This is just a fairly small town where we can map each individual building. Then uh, we might get, take a very detailed style with lots of uh, very detailed house symbols. If we're creating a very large city, it might be better to go for a simpler style, even a vector style perhaps. But uh, I'm thinking big and I want to take a bit of both worlds. So let's see what kind of city what do I want to create. I want to create the city of Drakenhall. That's a published city, or a city from... Uh, from public adventure module and a background from the 13th Age role-playing game, which I'm playing on and off with my group. It's a bit of a side project, not my main campaign, but uh, playing there and the Dragon Hall is the base of the player group, a very important location. And there, what you see here on screen is the only thing just vaguely map-wise that exists for the city. There's no official map, except for this more artistic impression, just some descriptions, and even those are not very precise and specific. So we've got lots of uh, stuff uh, to do. I already see the first question about uh, the um, city scale, and uh, we'll, I'll get to that. Uh, no worry, that's a big, important decision. And we also have the first decisions, cliff of the waterfall and the slope down to a harbor. Well, we'll have some of that probably. So, um, Dragon Hall has a, a nickname and that's the City of Monsters. And it's a very unique city in that it's the only city in that setting that is actually allowed to have 
um, humanoid monsters uh, living there, which actually make up the bulk of the population of the city. So it's in a general human, elven, dwarven, halfling uh, realm. That's the only city, city where hobgoblins and goblins uh, are citizens and nastier stuff walks the streets or hides beneath the streets and is ruled, ruled over by a big blue dragon. The blue uh, in the in the fiction. So we've got scope for lots of different things and uh, that we can uh, add to the city. It's um, actually built on a large or an old ruined city and so it does it should have lots of ruins still in there because it's in the process of being rebuilt carved out of the rubble from the monsters and some humans also live there so we've got lots of ruined districts and some more rebuilt stuff so that's a topic that we can for the city but we don't have is a real number of, of how many people live there. So we are pretty open to that. I'm imagining something like perhaps two or three ten thousands of people. Um, but also many of them living underground in the tunnels, you know, the, the uh, day averse, uh, the sunlight averse monsters uh, staying more beneath the streets. So the question from there is how large should we make our map? And uh, Paul, there has the uh, suggestion of a 12,000 by 8,000 feet map, which is very large uh, and is probably uh, correctly sized for a large city. Uh, well, of course, there are differences there, but the, it would fit a large city, but it's probably a bit too large for my purposes. I'm thinking of uh, mapping an area of about 4,000 by 3,000 feet or five, no, let's make it 5,000 by 4,000 feet. So about one and a half kilometers, a little bit more by a uh, square. And uh, that should give us a nice big chunk of area that we can fill this cities and um, with city streets and buildings and uh, stuff like that. Got another question from Fursus whether I'm going to make the underground area not in this first go. I'm certainly uh, thinking of adding an underground level at some uh, future point, but that's not our first consideration. I'm going to concentrate on the overground stuff first. All right, so I have decided on a rough size, 5,000 by 4,000 feet map. And then I've got to decide on my, the mapping style I want to create. Oh, uh, the mapping style I want to use. So I click New Map and go to the city's map type. I'm going to obviously decide settings myself. And then we've got a lot of stuff. My first basic consideration is do I take a bitmap style with higher detail or go from go for one of the vector styles for ease of display uh, for uh, quicker mapping usually uh, too but I certainly want to show off something nicely and what I want to do is I want to be able to later zoom in and get fairly detailed views of city blocks and uh, side street and alleys and for that if I don't want to have to redo stuff I'm obviously have to go for a more detailed bitmap style. But I'm going to try some tricks to uh, make the uh, to keep the map size and detail manageable, and uh, so I will try to take the best of both worlds and see how I can combine the large scale map with high level, high detail, close up views. All right, so um, let's have a look and go to the Darkland City style because that's the one I've decided I want uh, to use. One of the latest ones by Sue and a very beautiful style, fairly detailed, but uh, also lots of options, especially looking for the cliffs 
Kle, and so I'm gonna see what uh, I can do with those. And so I'll, other options would have been, uh, for example, what uh, I was thinking about the Ferrari style, but that's very specific and also one I'm not too familiar with myself. So I skipped that idea. John Roberts is certainly an option, but the amount of symbols in there is fairly limited. So I decided against that. If I had gone for a more uh, bold but a simple look, I might have gone for the Serpentine City stuff, but that, that isn't so good for doing close-up work. So I settled on the Darkland City. And I click Next. And gonna set my map size here. 5,000 by 4,000 feet is the size I decided on. Everything else I'll just do later in the map. I just want the plain empty map for the moment. And here I'm gonna click finish. Go to my videos folder. Big city. As you can see, it's the Big City 1 folder, so certainly more videos on the city are going to come up in the future. Um, it's certainly not going to finish this in an hour. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. And we call this Draken Hall. There we are. Plain background. Nothing special. Nothing special to see here. Um, another question about the playlist. Uh, yes, uh, we'll certainly put them together in one uh, specific playlist uh, so you can watch them in succession and uh, reference them all together easily. All right, so, well, there we are. Blank map syndrome. Where do I start? As usual, I start with the coastline, something. I've... Uh, going to go back to my source images I have. As you already can see, this is this, this is a coastline. It's a coastal city. It has a harbor. And uh, if I go here, we do also have a general location in the world here. You can see Drakenhal sits on the Cori Straits across from Cape Thunder and uh, on the... Well, got, I haven't got the larger map here, but it's the eastern end of a uh, Mediterranean type uh, inland sea. And uh, it sits on the south, uh, on the coast, on the coast facing southwards. Oh, and that's all we can get from this sample of very large scale overland map. This shape here of the harbor and anything is not really any indication of the map I want to draw because what you see there, the background with the three-headed dragon, uh, if you can even see that, it's the logo of the dragon that rules over the city. Uh, so it's really just an artistic impression and not something that is really represented in the city itself, as I imagine it, at least. Going back to our city, and of course I've uh, jotted down some notes from the source box that I have on the city, the short mentions that are in the game, it's really not that much, but there's some stuff in there that I'll take into account, which I've collected together, and I want to introduce into the city. And uh, I've got some landmarks here. One of the big things is the Tower of the Blue. That's the big central tower where the Blue Dragon lives and uh, the towers over the whole city. And that's certainly a, a focal point of the map. We also have a Tower of the Silver. There's a Silver Dragon imprisoned or bound to a tower in, this, in the city, which is across the city from the Tower of the Blue. And so certainly an interesting landmark that I want to include. Then we have the the, um, the coastal district, salt side in the sea. We do have some cliffs. From the background history, the uh, I imagine that the old city was destroyed in a, an earthquake or something similar. It's probably a magical catastrophe where part of the coastline broke away and fell down into the sea. Well, leaving behind a big cliff and below that rubble and uh, 
uh, lower harbor, which is now the new harbor with docks and everything, which are below, so below the cliffs. There's a uh, mention of old magical elevators going up the, the cliffs in the past, which are in, uh, in disrepair. Um, we've got floating districts, districts in the harbor where ships are lashed uh, together. Uh, we have an undersea uh, drowned city in front of the air, so part of the old city has uh, fallen underground and there's, so there's ruins below the water, so there, there might be options for to uh, take some hints from, from Sue's marine dungeon style and do some parts of the city below the waves. Of course, with the City of Monsters you also have some aquatic monsters like Sahuagin and similar stuff which can just live there. We've got sewer outlets coming from under the cliffs and running into the harbor. We have a large ruined part to the west of the central city and much of the rest of the city is known as Rubble City, so that's partially restored districts where uh, certain factions and uh, monster groups or human factions have rebuilt parts of the city, but not all, all of it. There's mention of a beast market where animals are sold. The church is an old cloister or cathedral in ruins. We've got the goblin market, a uh, place where the goblins sell all kinds of weird and interesting things. It's only open at night. Um, but there's a place where you can get almost anything for a price. We've got Mad Mad's Alley, where mad wizards and prophets hang out. We've got a slave market. We've got Sweet Hall, which is a large tenement, bl tenement block or built-up area where adventurers, con adventurers congregate. And we've, then we've got Villas and manors and manor houses dotted around the city where powerful people have uh, taken sections of the ruins and uh, fortified them, made their own abode and uh, control the area around them. And then we do have a human district where more order is impo imposed and uh, normal humans are mostly safe from any monsters or anything, which otherwise might get quite dangerous, especially at night. And uh, so that's a human district we can map. So we've got lots of stuff to think around, but the first thing is um, we uh, can see uh, uh, what we come up with now? I've got, we've got a, I've got a request from Sue to put the the uh, stuff into the map itself, which is actually quite a good idea. So what we can do is we can just grab this text and um, do a text in here, multi-line. Put this in here. Left and put it here or to, off to the side of the map so we can reference that easily later. Actually though we might uh, have to do another paste because campaign curve's text field is limited and uh, we might have gone beyond the uh, size but let's first change the text properties because I don't want this text font instead let's use something easier to read on screen here okay you can see it's only worked until drowned so drowned city let's see whether we can get the whole rest on the map Top left and change the text properties again. Prior Arial, 100 size. Yeah. Do we have everything? Yes, we've got everything. So we've got our map stuff here on the side. And we can. what we can also do is 
if we wanted to, well, let's do that at the image here to remind us of the general look of the map. Let's put here on, on the top. So first thing, as I said, is I want to create the coastline. So the harbor and the, the coastline parts where uh, the, the cliffs will be later. So um, yeah, I might uh, do a sketch, but I'll probably keep that to uh, later th uh, parts of the city. I think I can do the water area, the, uh, the sea area directly with the appropriate tool. So I'm going to click all drawing tools, scroll down and let's grab um, a water tool. But I'm actually thinking smooth or I could actually do a, create a uh, fractalized tool. And I'm going to go with the smooth tool for now. So I'm uh, thinking of a general large hilly area in the center or where the tower will be in the middle and then to the south of that it drops off to the cliff and then the part that's fallen basically fallen down and building the new harbor. So I'm uh, going to start here and I'm going to start by adding the harbor area. So basically an uh, area where There's a, a large hill has broken away and uh, formed a huge avalanche that's fallen down into the sea. So it will be a slow rise out of the water until to the cliff where we get there. And I'm going to put the cliff on top of that. And we just need the rest of the harbor here. I'm going to do a little... peninsula here and then going back and the tool I'm going to draw a little bit across the map border so we uh, don't get the effects we don't see the effects on the edge of the water and then uh, here I'm going to start with a little further out another cape here then finish that. And there's my coastline. Okay, with that I can add a little bit of an islands to that or I'm gonna think about a river or something in a second. Let's first add a couple little islands. Islands are always interesting because they have certain easy to restrict access. So I'm gonna take the smooth island tool and add a little island here. This is a color key effect that cuts out the water. So getting in there, not bothering too much about the effects at the moment. I'm gonna tweak those later if I want to. islands here and perhaps one here just in front of the docks. All right that should be enough for now we can always change this later. So the next question is then where we are going to put all our interesting stuff. And uh, for that I'm going to go with a bit of uh, sketch tools. And uh, I don't think we have any uh, drawing tools for that in here directly. And I'm going to set something up for myself. And uh, because I like to use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sheet for that. Call it sketch. It's fine to put it on top of everything else. 
And for the layer, I'm gonna go with. Uh, do we have a temporary layer? No, we don't have one in there. So I'm just gonna put a temporary layer. And I do like to do my sketches in bright green, so they are nice and visible. And from those, I'm now gonna set up a drawing tool. Advanced. Gonna choose a basic tool. And new, and I'm just going to call it map sketch. And path polygon is fine, but I want a straight one. I don't need any curved ones here. And I'm going to use the color one, put it as a plant on the temporary layer. The sheet is going to be sketch and the hollow fit style. There we go. So I could have just drawn that uh, from here, but this way, if I I don't need to set the settings again for f uh, future if I, uh, uses of the sketch when I wanted to start sketching again, I've done something else in between. So in general, I want the whole area to be f lots of cliffs because I imagine the sitting uh, city sitting quite a bit above of the water, except for the, the harbor area here. Um, so I'm going to sketch in general my cliffs first. I know I'm the, I'm they're going to go here across the section where the big hill has fallen away. Oh, then I'm probably got, got a beach here. And then I'm going to go out and make this whole thing here pretty cliffy. Going all the way around here. And then I'm uh, actually going to go this way, just back here. I could have made sure to attach it to the map border or make an open polygon, but this is fine too. And here I'm going to do a no cliffs here directly, more of a beach area here as well. And so this is basically my first contour really. And I know I do want uh, cliffs along this stretch here and this way and along this way here. And that's just with some gaps in between. So let's use this as our first uh, as a contour line. And we do have that big uh, hill area here in the center. What we now can actually decide this is the contour here. So it's high and steep here. This way it's good a bit flatter again, then coastline all the way here. There we go. And then we do have the, the main hill itself sitting here. And this would be a good place then for the highest place where the big tower of the blue will sit. And I also want to add a higher area here at this point. And yeah, that's fine for the moment. So I've got to decide where the uh, tower of the silver is. And I'm imagining it up here. Uh, oops, across the city, another hilltop, not as high as the Tower of the Blue, but then here in this center. And we can also add a little more contour here. 
I hope this is probably not very visible on screen here. So I might actually change the color of that so it gets a bit more visible in the, in the video. So I'm going to change color by color 1. Um, didn't want to change actually the back uh, the background image there. Uh, it won't, wouldn't be visible anyway, but I do want to keep it at its original um, color. So I'm going to combine this and layer temporary. Then this way we only have our sketch lines selected. Press D for do it and make it color 2. That's the dark red. I think that's better on the on screen here. Yeah, so that's looking good. So what I'm going to do now is just put in a couple, actually what I can, um, text labels, just a general indication where I want stuff to be. So I'm just going to get this tower of the blue. Center and a bit smaller. And I want to know the tower of the silver. There we go. Good. And um, then I'm going to highlight some areas. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to adjust my sketch tool a bit and make the color current color. That way I can always adjust that on the fly. I tend to avoid the color 6 because that's our um, highlight color if something is selected. So that gets different, difficult to differentiate if you do your temporary items in that color. But the color 7 is fine. So let's put this in here and say these are the docs. And uh, so we'll have a lot of ruins in this direction. This is also um, a trick if you have a large city but are not bothered to show absolutely everything while. So I can just put the ruins up here to the west to, uh, of the map and just let them extend beyond the map border. That way, if I do need a larger map at some point, I can always enlarge this area. Always keep your op options open is my motto in these. So if I can put stuff up to the map border, I can always say, oh, it's just beyond that border there and I can add it later. And um, then I'm uh, thinking about whether I should put in a river. The description of the city and all the background information does not mention a river, but it's rare for large cities to not be on some kind of waterway, because it just does has too many advantages in uh, transportation and removal of waste and everything. So most um, important cities of our history have been on one or more rivers generally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a smaller one or perhaps even two smaller ones and say that these are just not major features, so probably not open for shipping or anything, but at least they bring fresh water. All right, so let's uh, take a look and grab the water tool again and add a river here on this side. This looks like a good place for waterway to run. And I can just overlap these to uh, connect to the water.
Oh, it looks good. And I'm actually gonna draw this as a white line. Just how wide is the question? Um, let's say just for a small stream. And I'm gonna use a smooth path to draw a stream running down this way. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, let's zoom in a bit. You can see, yeah, all oh, the sheet effects connect nicely. And that looks pretty good. The light green go glow around the inside the water gives that a nicely not too clean looking aura. Because this is, will not be the cleanest city of the world. Good, so we've got a general layout here. That's a good start for things. Let's uh, have a look. What else do we uh, want to note already here at the map? We've got the Tower of the Blue and the cliffs, the docks, elevators we don't need to pick out yet. We've got some floating um, districts, so we can add some of that this and let's just add a nice floating city here. This is where I'm going to put my float. And the other one is float royale. And this is actually uh, for the fiction um, something a little further away from the city where pirates have uh, congregated. So I'm thinking whether I should actually put it on the map or decide for now that it's off the map. Because uh, pirates right in front of the entrance might be even a bit much for a monster inhabited this city. But uh, so I'll leave them out for now. Can always add them later. So we've got a uh, nice space here in the middle to have the uh, drowned city here between the float and the docks. Sewer outlets. I've got a proper uh, nice couple ones here. This looks like a good location for that. And this here. No, sure. Oops. Ruins, we already know where they go. Rubble City is the rest of the map. What I want to mark generally is probably the Goblin Market. So that I think that would make a, a good place for that. It would be between the two towers, somewhere here. It also extends below the city quite a lot, but uh, there will be um, one spot where it's accessible from the top. So let's. And market. The other ones I can keep for later. Also the manor houses, just something where I would want to put the scales district. And that's probably quite nice if we put that here pretty close to uh, the river, just beyond where the ruins are. So. Uh, this is actually a fortified section, so we're going to put a wall around that later. Scales. Oops. All right. With that, we do have quite a lot of stuff to work with. We can branch out from that. We have lots of stuff for rubble areas around uh, to the north and to the east of the city. I know where I do have some specific locations from uh, 
my campaign and for my role-playing group, the base is in the cliffs uh, somewhere on the city, looking actually eastward. So I'm thinking about uh, putting it somewhere around here. That will be a nice location for the uh, place they've carved out for themselves. Yeah, um, grids are of course useful as Vivian mentions, uh, play around. I sometimes am already put in a more visible one. For, for, for example, we can uh, go in to uh, light gray or probably better dark gray because on the land background it's more important and do a hex or square overlay, a square grid with a 50 foot grid on this. For now I'm not going to put any labels on, I can always put that on later. And so I know here if I need it I've got the 50 foot grid and actually I can hide it that for now and just leave the, the grid on here without snap. So I do know these, those are 50 feet sections. Quite a lot, actually. So next up, I'm uh, gonna take a look at uh, some of the setup, how I want my fills to look, my streets and stuff. So, and I'm gonna start out by doing that in a small area. And I want to go start with the docks to uh, do that and have a look how my roads look. So the docks are pretty cut off from the uh, other areas because of the cliff, but it will have some uh, paths uh, in in its area itself. So let's have a look what we do have in roads and streets. Roads up here. 10 foot road, 10 foot road for a city is a medium sized, uh, not, not a very small alley, but not a big road. So, um, so perhaps let's go with a, a 15 foot road for a larger one to start with. Just have a look, Let, lay down one. So I've got one running along the bottom of the cliff basically on the docks. from the two sewer entrances other and so that's my st street. Let's see if I zoom in. We've got a fairly large uh, edge fade here. We also have uh, the bitmap fills in a low resolution save time, whatever one, I can always go in here and set that to a fixed bitmap quality to see how this will look later. So there you can see the nice um, bitmap fill in its correct, uh, full detailed look. And I'm thinking perhaps the edge is a little, the edge fade is a little bit too large for me here at this point. And, but that's actually details, I can always go into that later, but to be able to see the uh, edge a bit more clearly on the map. And uh, take a look where we are actually, let's uh, just check which sheet we are on, we are on the road sheet, obviously. Take a look at the edge fade. And we have a four foot edge fade effect. Let's put this, turn this down to two for the moment. And I think that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, uh, obviously something clicked for someone there, how you can change re resolutions. Uh, we've got the display settings here. Normally automatic bitprint quality is, is good to have on to, uh, so campaign card on a large map like this does not show you the full resolution always, depending on the zoom level and everything. Uh, and that, but for faster computers nowadays, it doesn't make much uh, difference anyway. So quite often, I will actually 
just uh, switch to fixed bitmap, bitmap quality and have the high detail on all the time. And then, oh, here we are. And I want to try out a little more. I'm gonna grab the uh, road again. We we'll have some other sections of road here. So I'm gonna put in some major roads of the do on the docks here. We are. And um, then I want to check out what background. What I do have here is this sandy background that's not too suited for the full uh, city background. This is just, it's good for, for the edge of uh, our water area, but I do want to add more stuff here. So I'm going to go into my terrain settings and have a look. I'm certainly not going to go for fields, also uh, grass at this point, and most of the city is probably not too good, but uh, we've got some darker browns here, which might be good. Slurry pit sounds wonderful there for a dirty dock area to start off. Let's take this first and let's just fill a bit of areas, just mostly to, to look how I want my fills to be, I can always change these later. So let's take this section here for the moment. Okay, where did that pull it go? That's on the terrain sheet. Ah, okay, this is uh set up to uh, sl the slurry doesn't have its own terrain sheet here actually yet so because I wasn't on a terrain sheet I just uh, created a new one but that's fine As I, since I want, so I'm just gonna rename that just to terrain slurry take a look at my marsh settings copy these paste them here and give them a try. And this is my edge. Yeah, looking pretty good. Might make the uh, edge fade a little bit smaller. And say 10 foot. And then inside of that, I want to uh, create another terrain section. Uh, terrain uh, texture, not section. And for that, I'm sand terrain default bridge earth. I want one of the earth stuff here, dark one. And just have this slurry mud be on the edge of the docks. bothering about this size much because I'm overlay that with something else later anyway. And so there's basically two layers of terrain that I have. This one has gone on its own sheet uh, directly. So if I choose extract properties and use this on this, you can see it goes on terrain earth. Oh, hi, so, uh, the cat's coming up. You're late, Aza. It's already fairly late in the session. Come on. Get away from my keyboard. That makes it a bit easier to work here. You can come on my lap. There you go. All right. So I'm going to add a couple smaller side streets between the big ones I've added. So let's grab the... And here, and now I just want to test out how the buildings look on this. 
Well, actually, these should probably be on. Uh, they have a little uh, different texture, so I'm going to send them to the back. I can also put them on their own sheet, probably. We do have, or well, create a new road sheet for that, but I'm going to leave them on this one for now. And let's grab a building. All right, now I've got the, the nice uh, H tiles here, which look nice and good for my um, building sections, for my buildings. And I'm, but I want to be careful and start placing stuff on the correct layers right away so I can better color symbols later. And for that, I'm going to have a look. And actually, we do not have the uh, different the standard city designer layers on the sheets. These are the ones with buildings, which can easily be used with the uh, coloring command from the city designer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in city and add the... Where are they? Oh, I should have... Create index, or no, uh, add city layers on street. Am I blind? Oh, let's have a look. Am I not in the correct color buildings? Street options. There we are. Ah, just blind. Uh, add city layers. There we go. <laughs> And there you can see we've got all the different uh, ones added here that are default for City Designer. You can obviously um, create your own, and these are to denote functions of uh, your map. So what I'm going to do now, for now, I'm going to put the ones here on Building Industry. I want to place, I'm also going to set a color for them already. So let's go with uh, the dark orange. And now I can grab one of the buildings here and just have a check. I'm not going to place all these behind like this, but I want to uh, try them out. So you can see they are fairly small on this map. Scale is fine. And if I now go in and from the city tools, go into layers and all buildings with color, then I will the city la layout, the whole city layout will just show the colors for the buildings and if I place them all correctly they will be color coded to um, show their function which is a nice feature uh, on a city map to have. And it also what it does at this point here it um, gets rid of all the complex bitmaps that are uh, display, uh, displayed all the time and will make it much easier to work with the map and displays uh, display it as I go along. So I might for quite a while leave this off uh, and just show the colors. This also works with the street and house tools. So if I uh, grab the house tool here, let's just uh, have a look and see how this looks. Place some buildings here along the street and you can see they do the exact same thing. And if I go in and say city layers with shading, there they are again. And now what I see is that perhaps the... Oh, sorry about that. Here we go. Um, the edges of the houses are fairly complicated. They have this ragged edge, which means they have lots of nodes and uh, will get complicated, especially if I fill large parts of the map with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these and take a look whether I can do these street houses in a little bit simpler style. And if all, for that I've done a little bit of preparation, but I'm going to go into house settings first. And as you can see, we've got the, uh, that's the default house uh, style for this um, setting the default one with the ragged edge. If I go into this house settings here, you will see this is 
um, handle to the house style gothic here. If I go for default, let's see that the edge is straight and clear. Okay, um, and I've already set up a simple style here which doesn't have this. So it's uh, just have the simple versions of these. And now what I'm going to do is I'm go in right click the random street settings here and uh, did I set up a simple? Yeah, I did I set up a simple style for this already. But I, this is just the normal tiles. I also want the darker ones. And for that I'm going to go into the settings and just 50% of the simple ones. And then on the, the what else do I have? Simple slate. So well, let's make this 40%. Okay, it's still another one. 30% and another 30% and for this I'm going to do the H thatch. And now we're going to get a mix of these different symbols if you use that tool. I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to use this again. Click the random street tool, center of the road, and then just place some building outlines here. Oh, um, we have got one setting in there which still has the the edges here. Let's see which one that is. Street settings. Ah yeah, I didn't choose the simple thatched one. There we go. That should be better. And we can also do this with a different street. As you can see, if I zoom out this is just a very tiny section of my map, lots of stuff to do, and if I fill it this all up with that detail of buildings or even more detailed ones with the gothic edges, then I'll probably get into trouble with the whole with the performance on the map. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some buildings here at the moment, and now I'm gonna go for the colored versions, all buildings with color. And this way I have less trouble. Another setting you can uh, do if I show them again. And I'm just show you some stuff to make the map work faster. While of um, going on towards the end of the session already. Yeah, that's what I feared with a city map like this. I'm um, very quickly through the hour. But anyway, all buildings with shading. A good option to make uh, your display work much faster and be less prone to problems is to disable line fill styles. Those are the settings that allow your... Oh, actually, let's, let's take a look um, to see what the real difference here is. No, this is not good. Let's look at this house here. You can see the tiles are all neatly aligned to the roof edges and the in the correct direction they are showing. That's despite them all being the same bitmap fill, but they are bitmap fills with uh, al alignment, and the alignment value tells campaign cartographer how to align or to show the in which direction to show the bitmap fill. That does take computation power, of course, and you can turn this simply off by disable the line fill styles. Do a refresh, and then you can see they are all in just one direction, the default direction of the bitmap fill. Doesn't look too good if you zoom in that closely, but as soon as we zoom out a bit, you won't really see a difference anymore. So this is a good option to turn off. Learning, learn, working with lots, lots of roofs. You can even go uh, or stuff you can do disable shading that will take all the roof shadows off. This is more noticeable as you can see where it doesn't work uh, on is on the symbols. They will always keep their stuff. But on the buildings, uh, group buildings, it does that. So that's quite noticeable. You can even draw the line fill style solid. Then they will just show in the color you've drawn them in. 
or um, in black in this case and uh, obviously that's just if you need to work quickly and get around the map quickly without displaying all the houses properly. So usually for my purposes it's in enough to disable the, fill, 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 the, the aligned fill styles. And here we are and what I'm mostly going to do is I'm not going to draw all the individual houses for the stuff, but instead what I'm going to want to go into next is draw some districts and then uh, show just the basically outer outline of a district and that will make it much easier to fill the majority of the map. And then you can always go into a specific places and put in individual buildings where you want them. But that's the hour over and we've uh, made a little start. We've decided on our settings and, uh, and the size and done some first design work, how we want the, the bitmap textures to look. I will probably always go in there later and adjust stuff and see how everything works in general. And we've just scratched the surface but we've done that at least, and we can continue working with this map later. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, episode three, and that's my worry. If I do this all in the live mapping video, where I obviously explain more and it, it takes a lot longer, then I'll never get around to finishing this. So what I was thinking of doing is doing more work like this, which is going to be all the same anyway in between the sessions and then go back into the city in a, in a mapping session and show you something new I, I'm doing uh, and go from there and so highlight the important points basically in the map mapping process and uh, that way you don't have to follow me along my 17 hours or 1700 hours uh, creating all the little de details of the map and see the important stuff I've done. Uh, but if you want to see something specific and uh, let me know, let us know. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for the map, happy to uh, read through them and take them into consideration. And hopefully see you again next time with the map. Next week I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be at Gen Con. Uh, first trip stateside for quite a while. But Remy will be there and do a live mapping session. And the week after, it depends, it's fairly close after I return uh, from the States and how my jet lag will be. I'm not entirely sure I can do a video at that point. My voice tends to tends to be gone after a week at Gen Con 2, or I might even get a cold. You never know oh, that's, uh, with this, all this stuff on, might even uh, catch COVID again, but we'll see. And... Uh, so I can't promise I'll be able to do a session in a couple of weeks' time, but I'll try my best. So until then, do your own mapping and enjoy everything you do hobby-wise. All the best. See you again soon. And if anyone uh, comes to Gen Con, stop by, say hi, and uh, we can chat. Bye-bye. Have a good night.